in the business of exploiting lonely men. If there's one thing that the internet has taught me, it's that you can monetize just about anything. Yep. Ice cream is so good. Yes, popcorn. I can't with this NPC TikTok trend. I can't. Oh my god, I want to punch this woman so badly in the face. Ice cream is so good. <laughs> Imagine my lack of surprise when people monetized the epidemic of sad and lonely men. Whoa. is the greatest thing that exists on the face of the planet. That's what I want to teach you on this course. Unplugging from the matrix of fitness and game. And you might be thinking, oh, how big is this? Well, business is booming. Dozens of people, loads of YouTube channels that are earning millions of dollars a year selling a lie, claiming to have answers to a very real problem, but just making everything worse. So let's go on a journey together. I'm gonna to put on my Morpheus cosplay and hand you that red pill. Uh, We're going go. down the rabbit hole of truth and let's red go. pill in the red pill and breaking these lonely, desperate men out of their Andrew Tate worshipping mind matrix. Mm. One thing that is impossible to ignore when discussing the rise of internet ideologies and movements is that of misinformation and bias within the media. Clickbait driven headlines and manipulative algorithms often make it difficult to know where to get reliable information. That's why I've been using Ground News, an app and website that combines news from around the world in one place and provides Isn't context that? that mainstream media does not, like political affiliation. Speaking of ad, I had a YouTube comment, right? On one of the Sean Head reaction videos that I skipped the ad and that he's gonna give a dislike. I didn't skip the ad. And I checked back and the ad is live on the video. It just confused the shit out of me, man. Source ownership uh, and factuality short ratings. Here. What the heck? They are a small team working to hold the media accountable and they are sponsoring this video. For instance, let's search Andrew Tate. On the website, we can see there are almost 500 stories published on him in the last three months. Ground News shows the top articles and even blind spot stories that are underreported by the media. Look at this story, Apple removing Tate's app. Only 33% of coverage on this story is coming from the right, making a blind spot for anyone who doesn't get their information from these sources. It's interesting to see some sources headline the claims calling the app misogynistic and a pyramid scheme, while others say Apple was slammed for keeping the app. Ground News makes it super easy to understand where even your own bias might be. It is an important resource to avoid living in a bubble of algorithm-driven coverage. Go to ground.news slash Kira and sign up through my link. Get 30% off unlimited access to data-driven information through my link before October 15th. What is the red Tate pill? Cells. How did we get here? Why does it exist? And who cares? All very important questions, but let's tackle them in order of importance. So what is the red pill? The red pill has been many things. Originally, mm -hmm. it was an allegory for transgender, according to the creator of the term, Lily Wachowski, who popularized it in The Matrix. Mm -hmm. However, and very ironically, now the red pill is used by a group of predominantly men who co-opt it as an ideology around how to live life, specifically about the real truth of society yep. and their place within it. This mostly pertains to masculinity, conspiracy theories, making money, and women. So all these people actually believe that we live in a matrix. That is so insane to me. Like, some of these people make it literal. They take the literal movie concept and saying they do live in a matrix, like... Logic... Went all out the fucking window that day. The red pill is also not the only word that this movement goes by. It can also, in many popular spaces, be substituted with the word manosphere. Oh, the if manosphere. If this is the red pill, what is the black pill? Because I heard a lot of people talking about black pill people as well. 
Like, I got... Obviously, I got the blue pill and the red pill reference from, like, the Matrix and shit, but the fuck is the black pill? Black pill is basically giving up. It's essentially nihilism. You can't win. Oh, okay. Isn't black pill full doom? I don't know. Depression, maybe? Black pill is nihilism done wrong. Okay, that's nihilism. these things you might be surprised to learn just how huge this movement is so the question of how we got here comes down to one man sort of am i successful am i competent you know am i achieving things am i do, am i am i respected if you start to look at these indicators of your life you're gonna end up being happier now i do need to say that andrew tate himself has said no no you're not what where <laughs> you're gonna end Am I, am I respected? If you start to look at these indicators of your life, you're going to end up being happier. You are never going to get someone's respect for the, se uh, for the pure reason of having their respect. And if you need to be respected for you to be happy, you've already failed in life. Holy shit. Question of Like, if you need validation from outside sources for your happiness it's not real happiness it, no how we got here comes down to one man he does like two valid points out of the over 1000 he made yeah he has like a handful good points but he has a thousand bad points sort of am i successful am i competent you know, am I achieving things? Am I, do, am I, am I respected? Nihilism, nothing matters. There's no higher meaning, but done right. Is, it also entails, I give it meaning, I enjoy it, and that's enough. Oh, okay. If you start to look at these indicators of your life, you're going to end up being happier. Now, I do need to say that Andrew Tate himself has said he isn't red pill and that he finds the whole concept of most of the people involved to be crude. He isn't Red Pill, but he also talked about how the Matrix is real. I've seen clips of how he's talked about the Matrix and how he's gotten out. What do you mean? Cringe, but his unwillingness to co-op the term is relevant to the reality. And that is, his talking points are almost identical to the whole space and his popularity is what has accelerated the movement. And I do mean accelerated, because even without Andrew Tate or Up any other cult, Manosphere oh figurehead, God. this was an inevitability in modern society. We were already headed down this path. Andrew Tate was never the cause. He was simply the most prevalent symptom. Why do yeah. I say this? Well, let's answer the question of why it exists in the first place. It'll probably only take you a few minutes to Google search if you've not already seen these very shocking statistics when it comes to the rise of loneliness in men, especially young men. This is the real epidemic that is going to claim more lives than any- Yeah, we've talked about the male loneliness epidemic on Shoes video. It's... Yeah, he's, he's just Contagious talk about disease, it. and it's eroding the very foundation of modern society. For the record, this problem does not just envelop men, but it is more prevalent statistically for a multitude of reasons. On the face of it, men have less friends than ever before, they spend less time socialising with the friends that they do have than ever before, they're virgins for far longer, have sex less frequently overall, and they are self-deleting at an alarmingly high rate with numbers trending upwards greater than ever before. They're also less likely to seek mental health assistance, more likely to turn to drugs or substance abuse to cope with these factors which don't even play into the self-deleting stat, wow. and are overall becoming increasingly disenfranchised with the world, or most importantly, their place within it. So to answer the question of why Andrew Tate, why the Red Pill, why the Manosphere, Sneeko, podcasts like Fresh and Fit, the Red Pill Godfather, Rolo Tomasi, and many others Bye exist, day. it's very simple. It's because they need to exist. Supply and demand. These people- 
Thank you for the video recommendation, by the way, Jay. Didn't just appear for no reason. They arrived at the right time with the right message. And that is obviously not me giving them my rubber stamp of approval, as I believe each one of the people I just listed, as well as the majority of the Manosphere space, is a counterintuitive detriment to young men's lives. For reasons that we'll mostly go over in the next section, this is just me saying that this movement didn't arrive overnight for no reason and brainwash hundreds of millions of men. The male loneliness epidemic was already here. It's a cancer-eating society. The Manosphere presented itself as chemotherapy, bringing with it total destruction of the body, but without the added benefit of potentially- I know there's sex bots as well, I think it's dehumanizing. Yeah, it is dehumanizing. That was true. Sex bots are dehumanizing, and we are straying further and further away from normal human interactions. Eradicating the cancer. Not to say there are no good pieces of advice from any of these people, or a well-rationed person couldn't learn a few real truths from these spaces, such as eating right, exercising, socialising, and trying to better your situation financially. But these few truths are things almost anybody could tell you, without the added baggage of what is adjacent to the grift of these male self-help gurus. I'm of course talking about conspiracy theories and hatred. Obesity comes from you Jews affecting our media I'm with the your fucking- I'm the reason fucking... you're fat! No, you got- You said what? Obesity comes from you Jews affecting our media I'm with the your fucking- I'm the reason fucking... you're fat! No, you guys got McDonald's and all that shit! Huh? One of the very few men on- What? What? The grift. Almost anybody could tell you, without the added baggage of what is adjacent to the grift of these male self-help gurus. I'm of course talking about conspiracy theories and hatred. Obesity comes from you Jews affecting our media I'm with the your fucking- I'm the you're fat! No, you got- Conspiracy theorists. So they're blaming others for being fat? They're blaming... Mc... So they are blaming basically McDonald's for existing? They're blaming the existence of McDonald's for them being fat. Okay. Got it. You guys got McDonald's and all that shit. One of the uh, very few men on earth I do trust, good old Alex Jones. He said this, two months. I'm living kids for my running stomach, mom, but sorry. Before 9-11. They don't want you to be masculine. The biggest threat to their agenda is an independent, free-thinking man. Nope. N no. To be honest, I don't know who the, who he means by they, but as an as the average woman, as the average straight woman, I'm okay with men being men. Be masculine. Be feminine if you want to. Be whatever the fuck you want to. Honestly, does the fucking matter. It's a sneaker means Jews. He actually means the Jews? He actually meant the Jews and, Mac and somehow connecting them to McDonald's? Uh, wh what? And to answer the last question of who cares, well, I know on social media, no. Sneakers are known anti Semite. I didn't even know that he is. Wait, what? He's vocal about. <laughs> My brain. My brain. My brain cannot handle that. What? To be honest, the only thing I ever knew about Sneeko was when... <laughs> when that outrage happened, man, where... Wasn't that... Like, wasn't Sneeko the guy that wanted to watch his girlfriend getting... F uh, uh, what did I just do? Oh, no, I just skipped to a part of the video we weren't at yet. How did I do that? Uh, Sneeko was the guy that... The cock, yeah, the cock. There, here, here. Found oh, that good. Yeah, Sneeko's the cock. 
that's that's the first time I heard of that dude. That was the first time I ever heard of Sneeko. Independent free thinking man. And to answer the last question of He did watch and he's done it multiple times. Didn't he say he regretted it after? Didn't he say he regretted it? He had some drama with Moist too. Yeah. Uh about the gun or how he called gun or fucking all the fucking the magazine off a gun or something. Who cares? Well, I know on social of masculine or 9-11. They don't want you to be masculine. The biggest threat to their agenda is an independent, free-thinking man. And to answer the last question... Clips, the, that thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. ...of who cares. Well, I know on social media, nobody really cares about the fact that young men in particular are suffering because it's cool to be inclusive and empathetic to everybody, except for those you deem to have power as a group, despite the fact that most average men have little to no power at all over their own lives, let alone society. But you should care, because this is a reflection of that society. Not just that, but you probably have men in your lives as well that are struggling with things like this. Could be your brothers, fathers, sons, cousins, friends, yeah, or I old got acquaintances. Yeah, I have men in my circle that are struggling with this, as in instances. brothers I don't think it can be simultaneously father. true that we say everybody should get help. He definitely has a weird ego issue. But then demonize a clear growing trend that could bring economic and societal downturns just because it's cool to shit on men online. Which would probably sound better if it wasn't me, a man, saying this, but I am because it is important. The rise of the Tate cells, as well as the Tate growing cells, incel man. movement, hatred of women, conspiracy nuts, and a whole other host of issues exist because as a society, this issue is prevalent and persistent. I think society in general is too busy looking at the surface of those, you know, idiots who follow this stupid rhetoric to understand the reason that they do is because they're lost and these people are telling them that it's okay. These grifters that are making them believe all these crazy wild things are the only ones who- I'm gonna sound crazy for this. I'm gonna sound absolutely fucking mental for saying this. And I probably shouldn't say this. But it just, uh, like, uh, somehow it just reminds me of, like, when- Okay, this is gonna be uh, sounding absolutely mental of it, and of course it's insane to be comparing it to a war event. So take this with a pinch of salt, right? Take it with a pinch of salt. But w in school, we were taught that, like, <laughs> in school we were taught that when uh, Hitler was, like, having his campaigns and trying to, like, like, get promoted and all that shit, that he, like, he took the Jews to, and just found quote unquote, a common enemy for people to blame. He just found a common enemy for people to blame. And it just kind of, it just slightly reminds me of the same fucking shit that fucking Sneeko and Tate are doing in the way that they just find a common enemy. And that these, okay, more like that, uh, okay, I meant more on the guys that look up to Andrew Tate and Sneeko and whatever, I like the guys that look more or less looked up in a way that Hitler found a common enemy. <laughs> uh, it, it's like in a way that it's kind of a leader, that they need a little leader, is what I mean, I guess. And I don't mean it as in comparing it or anything, it's just like that it's like a similar strategy or something. It's like comparing them to that man just comparing the tactics so don't think it's out of pocket. It's a common tactic. Hey, good motivation a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scary, but kind of true. Hitler was a very smart person in the sense that he could manipulate people, but bad, bad man, but he was skilled in his field. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It, uh, it, it did kind of remind me of that. So, yeah. You are compassionately speaking to these men. They're making them believe, and the truth is, they are speaking pure lies, designed almost entirely for personal gain and enrichment. So, let's talk about the real red pill. 
The reality of the matter is, the red pill does have some merit when taken at face value. There have been shifts in society that resulted in vastly different circumstances for everybody, but especially for young men. For starters, society has moved beyond where most people live, and if they live where society now does, they then lack the skills to interact in the real world. That is a sentence doesn't make sense, right? Let me explain. Society for most younger people, as well as for most lonely people, exists online. Mm -hmm. Their society exists on social media. That is true. But where is it That's that they need to be in order nowadays. to actually better their situation? The real world with real people face to face. People have replaced social media with social interactions. That is true. Face interactions and social situations. This problem is compounding. The more time people spend online, whether as an escape from the pressures of real life because they don't feel that they fit in, or for comfort, the less social they're going to become, the more awkward any potential interactions will go. And of course, the and it's just easier to find like-minded people online than in your circle around you, you know? Like, there's no guarantee that who the fuck, like your neighbors, like just your host neighbors or like even like the people around the block are gonna have the same way of thinking of you. It's very easy to find an echo chamber online. That is as well. That is also true. You can only to find an echo chamber. But it is way easier to find people with the same interests online than it is offline, IRL, whatever. This leads to them being less and less likely to find the meaningful friendships or relationships that they need to live happily and normally. You can find meaningful relationships and friendships online. You can definitely find meaningful relationships and friendships online. If they are enough for a human being not to succumb to the depression of lack in regards of lacking social interactions IRL, I don't know. You can have meaningful friendships and relationships online. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy. And this is the problem that gets worse for the younger generation, especially after lockdowns where people have grown up on social media, hang out in person less, homeschool, go to college online, work remotely, date using apps, and generally skew towards hobbies that isolate them further. To put it simply, they spend It's interesting. In therapy, all patients prefer face-to-face -face of their experiencing at once. It is. That was true. That no, that is a true personally also. Like if someone would offer me an online therapy course, like with video, compared to going there in person, me having social anxiety and having anxieties about going outside and meeting pe people, I would still choose going there face to face. It's just something that's hardwired into our genetics that we just need the social skill uh, social uh, interactions not skill so i guess what i said earlier as well as it's in the end i guess it wouldn't be enough for just having online interactions and less time with real people and therefore a less confident or capable people it's so strange how the pandemic changed the entire world so much i think the world was gonna change in that way. Either way, the pandemic just accelerated it. I think the pandemic just accelerated it. Using apps and generally skew towards hobbies to isolate them further. To put it simply, they spend less time with real people and therefore are less confident or capable people in face-to-face -face society, which is where they probably have the highest chance to meet people who are going to give them the things that they're missing in life and remove that loneliness. A lot of people nowadays have either grown up not learning how to socialize because of social media and the internet age, or they've forgotten. Whichever one it is, they currently are not equipped with the tools to navigate the real world. You only have to look at cultures like Japan, where they literally have a word for this, ikikomori. 
Yeah, we, we also have about words in the West. Neats, incel Neats. is obviously one that people throw around a lot when people are just you know, really bad at talking to women and, of course, are involuntary celibate. Losers, when people <laughs> don't have friends and can't seem to get into good social situations. This is. Who's, who here is a loser? Raise your hand! Raise your hand if you're a loser, chat. <laughs> I'm raising mine! I'm raising mine! <laughs> this is a problem that transcends barriers of culture. This is how you know it just exists and it's growing me, in me, popularity me, 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 me. just due to the way that people interact with the world. This, of course, plays into the next problem, which is dating in 2023. Most people believe that due to the shift of society being online, there is no alternative to meet potential friends or romantic relationships without dating apps. Instead, they find themselves swiping on Tinder, where statistically and common sense dictates oh God, results are directly tied to one. It took me a moment to realize what's happening on stream, on screen. Romantic relationships without dating apps. Instead, they find themselves swiping on Tinder, where statistically and common sense dictates results are directly tied. Have you ever tried using a sausage for your touch screen? <laughs> and I don't mean your your wiener. <laughs> I don't mean your sausage. I mean a sausage. <laughs> it's been so I guess it would work out, you know? If you can do that without the sausage, you'll never have to worry about being single. Makes you wonder what those things are really made of. <laughs> no comment! I would try this right now if I had sausages at home. I to one attribute and one attribute alone, attractiveness. Let's be honest, most of us are not that good looking and on an app that is basically unhealthy fast food, of course people are going to pick the tastiest snacks. Yes, I meant someone else's sausage, obviously. It is basically unhealthy fast food. Of course, people are going to pick the tastiest snacks. There isn't nutritional value there that they care about because they're there for a quick bite and whatever looks the nicest is going to be picked. The common sense thing here is that this has nothing to do with women or men. Of course, the red pill does present it as such where women only want a six foot tall <laughs> giga chad. This just has everything to do with the fact of the matter. If you show someone 10 people without any real indication of other redeemable or disqualifying traits, asking them to pick from the list using exclusively only their physical appearance, of course the result will mean the most attractive people get the most results. Okay. This leads to yeah, men becoming disenfranchised and thinking that women only want them if they're this thing that they are not which essentially removes all of their responsibility in the situation. Oh my god. Hey, I finally get to address this. Cool. Women don't like guys who are below six foot. Um, this ain't true. This just ain't true. Yes, there are fucking some women over there who are all like, you need to be above this and this and this height. But actual people that you are worth spending like that are worth your time off they will not care about your height they will not care about your height holy shit i i've gotten i've gotten a message i've gotten a message quite some time ago quite some time ago um from a guy I was I was in regards of my YouTube videos from a guy where he said he was discriminated again. He was being dis no 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 let me let me correct let me state the phrase correctly. He was being discriminated against him because of his height. And he was let me show you how tall he was.
This is how tall he was. 5'8 inches. That's 173 centimeters. And he said, I wouldn't understand how it is being discriminated against as a woman. I'm just gonna let that sink in. I'm just gonna let that sink in. I did not go into the argument of how fucking stupid his point was. 5'8 is above the global male average. Yep. Yep, it is. And he said he's been discriminated because of this his entire life long or something. That is a pretty good height, isn't it? That is a decent height. I have a lot of... Like, there's a lot of guys that are this size, man. Like... <sighs> I just can't with the logic of some people. Also, I've deleted a singular comment on my YouTube videos. Deleted. So far, chat, I will admit to it, I have deleted a single comment off of my YouTube videos. A single YouTube I have personally deleted. And it was a, a comment of, um, on a video that was... What was the video? It was, the point was completely... Oh, give me a moment, fucking hell. Where, where am I? Who am I? Okay, what videos did I re release recently? God, when I see when I see the thumbnail, I'll, I'll remember, man. It was regarding some man shit and women and what the fuck do I know, man? But he completely missed the point of everything. It was here. It was the dark world of unrealistic male body standards. It was on that video. You can't even see it because of my head. Whatever. Yeah, it was. It was. It was this video. Dark world of unrealistic male body standards. I have deleted a singular comment. And the reason for that being is he quoted me. I have said this is so unhealthy. Quote end. No timestamp given. Now, this video is 50 minutes long. I don't have the patience to go through a 50 minute video of my own. I don't have the patience for that, I'm sorry. But from what I remember, when I said this is so unhealthy, I have said it in regards of a child being hypermuscular and those bubble looking muscles, those bubble muscles. And the guy, the comment was, again, quote, me saying this is so unhealthy and him then going yeah and it's also unhealthy if women complain about a man's height and some temper tantrum after that in regards of that he he took a quote of mine and gave a completely different topic at what's at hand hey Michi, hi I am Yuchi. Hello, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hope your stream was nice and ended nicely earlier. What did I turn into? Me raging about one of my YouTube commenters. <laughs> like, how the fuck do you go from it being unhealthy, being having bubble muscles, where a single paper cut will bleed you out to being regarding man's height. Holy shit, man. Holy shit, I fucking can't. That shit's insane. Like, people, can you think for five seconds before commenting, please? <laughs> five seconds thinking. Just think five seconds before you press send. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. Just five seconds. <laughs> you turned into Kitsu being based yet again. Aww. <laughs> Is the uh, abs require 5% or below body fat? I think for abs raise, at least can have up to 13% ideal. Also, the topic was also regarding steroid steroids and whatnot, like... He literally took out a topic and made it off-topic. Like, 
I deleted that. Like that that comment, that comment was so fucking insane to me. I I just I just didn't want it there. I just didn't want it there. Like usually I don't give a fuck. Usually I don't give a fuck if people fight each other in my comments. Go nuts. Go nuts. Fight each other. Kill each other in my comments. I don't give a fuck. But don't go off topic like that in a retard way. Genuinely. Don't go freaking off topic in a sense to and create a false narrative. If you are creating a false narrative, I'm getting you out. I if you're creating a false narrative about me, you're out. End of story. Fight each other, kill each other, kids in 2024. Yep. <laughs> Hold up, I want to see it though. <laughs> like, most of the time, most of the time, I just make fun of those idiots, right? Most of the time, I just make fun of those idiots. I don't care. It's content. For me, it's content. For me, me stupid comments like this are content. But at one point, it's just like, what are you even saying? What are you even saying? <laughs> So, I just move on. Because what are they going to do? Grow taller? Get more attractive suddenly? When you take the problem out of somebody's hands... Oh, yeah, and yeah, 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 exactly. Like, the thing he said is that women judged men on something as high that they couldn't change. While the video wasn't about women judging men. It was about the unhealthy body dysmorphia for men. Unrealistic body standards for men. The topic was not about women. Holy fucking shit. Oh my god. That... <laughs> that comment literally... <laughs> oh, that, that motherfucker. That motherfucker just, no, 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 shut up. <laughs> Stay on topic. <laughs> ...ability to influence it. Of course, they're going to turn to things that are external and start blaming the people that are making these decisions because they just can't speaking. blame yes, themselves. Yes, I am. <laughs> Obviously, there is a factor that society has moved forward for women as well, giving them greater opportunities for careers and for pay. This has essentially killed the one main selling point every man on the planet had in the dating economy of old times, which is an income. Now men are required to bring more to the table than just- Where's his head? How does someone just- How does someone just 90 degrees their neck? Which is an income. Now men- This guy just 90 degrees his fucking neck? Where's his head? <laughs> men are required to bring more to the table than just a paycheck at a time when men seem more lost in their own value than ever before. <laughs> also, because of healthcare increasing, it means that women can have children later, so they're not rushed by biology to have children when they're very young, which means they're going to mature and make better decisions about which type of people they're going to have in their life for the long term. Now, is this the common man's fault. Sure, somewhat, a little bit, because everybody can change and they all bear responsibility for their own circumstances to an extent, but it's also just the way society now exists and it's kind of happened without anybody really paying too much attention until the problem now exists. And realistically, it's not a question <laughs> of right or wrong. All of this and much more leads to the bigger overall problem of why the red pill and manosphere has grown so exponentially. The manosphere, guys. What do I mean? Well, in just about every walk of life, it's easier to blame something that isn't you. If you are this average unsocialized man who has little to no friends, no luck with the opposite sex, life's passing you by and you just don't know what to do about it, you've got no confidence and your options for who to blame are yourself. Holy shit, look at how young that boy was. That boy? You, do you see my mouse? You should. This guy right here. Like, he looks like he's 14, 15. Also here in the back. And you just don't know what to do about it. You've got no confidence. Here, that guy too. And you're Look how young they are. And they all just want to listen to Andrew Tate. That's so fucking sad, man. I blame social media and mainstream media. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree. 
Social Facebook. media and mainstream media is is hugely at fault for this. Blame all yourself or society. Chances are you're going to blame society. It's just easier to do. It's the self-defeating reality that if you do make the choice to blame society, it's going to change nothing about the circumstance and only send you down a path of manosphere, which is going to be further self-destruction. But that's what people are doing, whether knowingly or not. Now, of course, there are a million social stigmas of talking about problems are opening up emotionally to people. Wise man's... What do I do? What do I do? How did we get here? Fucking dumb. Defeating reality that if you do make the choice to blame society, it's going to change nothing about the circumstance and only send you down a path of manosphere, which is going to be further self destruction. <laughs> but that's what people are doing, whether knowingly or not. Yeah, because chaos. Course, there are nice. a million social stigmas. Yeah, of this is wise man's mental health not taken seriously. It's that's a whole lot of it to it, I would say. Hugely, yes, society said fault. Hugely, yes, society and social media. That's just of how history is made, I guess. Like men have been portrayed of this strong protector guy, and women have always been portrayed as this weak female needs to nurture children persona like on media and in the end uh, yeah it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's come to this which is sad because obviously man's feelings are valid too men's suicide rates are so fucking high man mental health is so high and people make fun of it you bear machine oh yeah that's what that's what women are gebär maschinen <laughs> talking about problems are opening up emotionally to people which for whatever reason yeah i can talk about how man's mental health and SA against them has been treated as a joke for so long yeah 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 i find it so ridiculous i find it insane that people like legitimately there's so many men themselves that say that they you, you can't um you know outwear them because they would enjoy it <laughs> i i have no words for this i have absolutely no words for it like I've seen it a hundred times, a thousand times, that there's articles where, like, there's a female teacher who has had sexual relationships with a student of hers who is a minor, and all the comments of the dudes will be, like, in the comments on the article or whatever will be like, where was she when I was in school? Or did he enjoy it? Oh, I wish I was him. It's insane. Like, it's insane. You can go to the mainstream media or even the media we consume, like movies, TV shows, every time the topic is brought up, it's played as a gag. <laughs> That's sad. It is just sad. Domestic abuse rates are about 50-50. Tell me where the nearest man shelter is. Is it about 50-50? That's insane. I, I didn't know the number, but I obviously know that there's also uh, domestic cases of men getting abused and that it is such a, sh uh, a shadow number or how you say it. I don't, I don't know what, what you call it. Like It's a number in the shadows, right? Where we don't have the true numbers because people are too scared of of speaking out about it. It's sad. I remember South Park did an episode about that. The meme with a policeman going, nice. I Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember. I I've seen that episode. I've seen that episode, yeah.
Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. South Park Family Guy all the, the, as a joke. I mean, South Park more to it did it to... South Park is doing it to bring light to those situations. I don't know about fucking Family Guy. I don't know how Family Guy does it. But South Park does things to bring those things into the light. In a very satirical way. Man, the father or not the case always makes me cry. The f oh, the father or not cases. Oh, yeah. Uh, bro, bro, I've, I've seen some cases of that where uh, the judge will say the guy is not the father, he breaks down crying and she starts celebrating. So sad. So sad. Contrast that from male to female and the way the topic is presented this night and day. Yeah, it is. South Park makes fun of both sides to show how problematic it is for everyone involved. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I had a teacher on one of my schools that known it was forbidden, so the teacher cried when the student was done with school. Quit when the school when the student was done with school. Wait, what? I don't know where you are getting your stats from, but reported domestic abuse is two to one female to male. I honestly have no idea about those stats. I always hated it when girls grabbed my ass in school. They did? Bruh, that is literally... That is... That is... But hey, you're, you're a guy. You, you just... It's just a woman doing it. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, let's, let's move on with the video. He's in his frowned upon as a man, but even less likely to happen since, again, statistically men these days have less friends, and with the growing manosphere influence, those friends are more likely to tell you to stop being a pussy and watch a video about Amity with GigaChad music in the background, <laughs> because of course that will fix all of your problems. Yeah! But talking about them would be something only a beta male does. You obviously can't talk about it on social media either, because if I've seen anything about this, it's that people are just going to come in and say you don't deserve to have problems, because you're probably just a man. So of course when nobody's that talking is. to you, nobody's listening to you, nobody's really representing your problems, when somebody shows up who looks like they're in shape, that who is. looks like they're a really masculine man, who's doing all the things that you want to do, who lives the life that you would love to live, and he's the only person talking to you, of course you're probably going to listen. And these are just some of the factors that led us to where we are today. I'm sure there's going to be more, but I could be talking about this all day without addressing the next point, which is that the red pill is just capitalism and greed from lying narcissists who are LARPing as the saviors of young men, while instead just causing them harm. The advice they give is terrible for 97% of their audience, meaning that they're selling out the vast majority, and the 3% who wind up becoming wealthy following the advice will make the situation even worse for the other 97%. It's a toxic wasteland of a few useful pieces of life advice wrapped up in hate uh -huh. that will poison an impressionable man's brain into becoming a worse person and therefore even less likely to ever find a woman who would want anything to do with them. I was thinking of a joke but I'm not gonna say it because that could actually Get me banned. So yeah, I, I'm not gonna say it. Now if there's something else the internet has taught me, hate is a very powerful tool. Once you recognize that the easiest way to build influence is to turn one group against another... What? <coughs> Explain to me! Why the hell does this woman... ...have a mask on? What is the fucking point? You will see it in every- Also- <coughs> Is it literally her bra? Is it literally just her underwear? Like, w w what are you doing? Everything that people do online. Politics is probably the most prevalent one. It's us versus them. We are the righteous. They are the evil. Everything we do is okay. Everything they do is bad. If we do the same things, it's for good reasons, but they're- the one with the red hair quit OnlyFans, actually. Well, she was an OnlyFans model. But she quit it? Well, good on her. She did it for the right reasons. Doing it for bad ones. Every conflict is black and white. Why? 
because it's easy and it feels good. The barrier for entry to this conflict is super. The red hat is now a question. After she found God. So. May she pray and repent. Low, it's way more accessible than any form of nuance would be, and it's easy to digest. It simply works. And that's exactly what the Manosphere has done to convince these men, who already were willing to believe things because they didn't want to blame themselves. They've told them it's team men versus team women. They use anecdotes of when a woman does something bad or wrong, and pretend as if they're not anecdotes at all, that there can't be good women and bad women, like there's good men and bad men. It's just all evidence that women are built this way, and they are the problem. So they're making everything simple by- You know, I would love to go on one of those uh, podcasts and speak my fucking mind on things, but then the bad part is that I'm really bad at, um... I think the word is articulating myself. Because English is my first language, and also because of the social anxiety. Uh, so it is hard for me to like speak the top of my mind right away. Like, I have to try and think about my words when I do react with this on shit, man. Kids on podcasts too much rage. It would, like, on one hand, I would love to just rage about shit. On the other hand, I'm really bad at articulating uh, my po like my views. Design, and I can't say for sure that all the people doing this are lying or grifting, but I can say that given enough time, each one of them gets caught living a contradictory life to what they tell their audience to live. Whether it's saying paying for sex is for losers and you shouldn't do that and then being caught on sugar baby <laughs> websites trying Thanks to find women to pay to hang out with. You approach me on a sugar... Kate, nine, eight, the VTuber. The VTuber... Roaster? Are you here to roast me now? Because I already do that. I mean, look at me. My whole existence is a roast to me. To find women to pay to hang out with. You approach me on a sugar daddy <laughs> website and ask me to be your sugar baby, and then Never couldn't did. afford my allowance. Never did. He couldn't afford my ten thousand dollar allowance a month, and said, "Haha, that's funny. Why don't you just come on my podcast instead?" Or saying sex workers like OnlyFans girls are the bane of society, ah. and you're platforming them constantly, which results in their audience subbing to them Wait, and making them what? more successful. Or, of course, having those women on the podcast and having sex with them, yet calling them 304s, which is the red pill slang for hoes. Or wow. maybe it's when they say that single mothers are used goods and they're worthless, but then get caught being married to a previous single mother who they lied about and said that her daughter was his niece because he was just too ashamed to admit that he loved a single mother and her daughter. I got a 13 year old niece that stays here at least twice a week. And so as we now look at her application on the screen and go to the section describing her household, it states. I have no words. I have absolutely no words for any of this. This is insanity. On one hand, he's judging all of that, but he wants to be one of those red-pilled motherfuckers, so he, like, denounces it. On, on the other hand, he does it himself. He's too ashamed of himself to admit that he's with a single mom. Uh, bro, fuck yourself. What the actual fuck? What is this? Never heard of fucking self-respect? You called single mom's leftovers. That is well. Yeah, he also called single mom's leftovers. So, hey, he's the one getting the leftovers, it seems. What the fuck? What? This is insanity. Women over 23 are leftovers! 
Look at this tunnel! Women over 23 are left all this! I never disclosed my age, but I'm going to say that I am over 23! I'm leftover! <laughs> yes, I'm a leftover! <laughs> Disregarding the fact that I am in a relationship, I am a leftover, apparently! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Do you have dependents? Yes. Does dependent live with you? Yes. Dependents age? 10 years old. Or of course when they call out girls for being fake and having plastic surgery and using makeup, but then get hair plugs, liposuction, fake teeth, and- The hypocrisy, man. The fucking hypocrisy. You judge- People are acting like if you're 24 plus, you're essentially getting mummified. People really are ageist. People really are ageist. People are so fucking ageist. It's insane. It's insane to me how ageist people are, man. You like I see comments like, "Oh, you're 35 and you still like anime." Let the man enjoy his anime. What? Let people enjoy what they're enjoying. 30 plus, you're basically the Walking Dead. Yeah, basically. The hypocrisy of those red pill madmen. They call out these women for all the fake tits and for all the plastic surgery and then they get hair plugs and liposuction and all that garbage, man. Fucking Christ. Use makeup on their own podcasts. Maybe it's saying that men should never settle for a girl who has had a lot of sexual partners but sleeping with every attractive woman that they can. A lot of girls are hoes. A lot of girls don't deserve a relationship. A lot of girls don't deserve marriage. And I know this is kind of controversial, but this is what I tell guys. I tell me you need to be at least 35 years old, have had sex with 50 girls. Thus creating a world full of their... What, 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 what? Every attractive woman that they can. Wait, 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 wait. Let's roll it back. Use makeup on their own Let's podcasts. roll it back a bit. Maybe it's saying that men should never settle for a girl who has had a lot of sexual partners but sleeping with every attractive woman that they can. A lot of girls are hoes. A lot of girls don't deserve a relationship. A lot of girls don't deserve marriage. And I know this is kind of controversial, but this is what I tell guys. I tell me you need to be at least 35 years old, have had sex with 50 girls. Thus creating a world full of their alleged biggest problem and fucking up for all the guys they're supposed to be helping. The entire red pill. Like the hypocrisy of this is just disgusting. Criticizes women for being hoes, but it's fine being a man. Oh yeah, the hypocrisy is so disgusting, man. Because if a woman does it, she's being a hoe. But if a man does it, he's being a player. It's like, yeah, nice dude. You fuck that bitch real good, man. Yeah, you did it. You're a player. You're a winner. You're a chat. You're an absolute fucking giga chat, man. You're an alpha male. Get the fuck out of here with that garbage, man. Let's get the fuck out of here with that garbage, man. Just, like... If you want to criticize someone, like, look at yourself first. Before you go out and criticize someone else, look at yourself first. That's... Like, yeah, these women aren't in the right, but neither are you. ...space is basically rules for thee and not for me. Some of the funniest... What amazes me is that the guys who watch this stuff regularly don't can see the hypocrisy of it all. Yeah, they can, because they're fed with the same brain rot that these guys are living on. It's the same thing. Don't be a hypocrite and criticize. Yeah, exactly. It's 
claims that you can disprove immediately, just if you've lived a real life at all, are that women are more than happy to let their boyfriend or husband cheat on them, so long as that man is... What? What? Wait, 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 go back. Claims base is based and fucking up for all the guys that's a a world. I tell me you need to be at least 35 years old, have had sex with 50 girls. Thus uh, creating a world full of their alleged biggest problem yeah. and fucking up for all the guys they're supposed to be helping. The entire red pill space is basically rules for thee and not for me. Some of the funniest claims that you can disprove immediately just if you've lived a real life at all are that women are more than happy to let their boyfriend or husband cheat on them so long as that man is high value enough. They're, that's what they're saying? That their women would be happily letting them cheat if they're a high value male? Meaning she will share her romantic partner out of fear that she could get fear. anybody so good. Ignoring the fact that this person would then not be good to most women because they're not just out to use you as an ATM and live that life. This is not how... Yeah, literally, you're just a sugar dad for them. ...how adult relationships work with the vast majority of people. Like, at this point, you're literally just a sugar dad to him. She will let you fuck another woman because you're just a credit card to her. High value? Yeah, because your money is high value. He couldn't get anybody so good. Ignoring the fact that this person would then not be good to most women because they're not just out to use you as an ATM and live that life. This is not how adult relationships work with the vast nope. majority of people. It's not. Essentially, the whole red pill seems to be a way to justify living the life of a teenage boy's dream, sleeping with a yeah, different basically. Instagram model or OnlyFans girl every, every night, day. telling everyone yeah, every who disagrees night. with the red pill that they are a beta male, blue-pilled soy boy. But this is a lie. The whole red pill is a lie. You only have to engage with the simplest of concept to understand that. For example, these guys preach that the way to break free of all your problems is to become a high value man. Yeah, meaning just be a that you're in shape man. and wealthy. The I percentage of people- Was that Goku? Was that AI generated Goku? Is to become a high value man. Wait, wait, wait. Meaning that you're in shape yeah, and wealthy. Yeah, one off there, I think. This is what the big mouth fantasy looks like. Oh my god! <laughs> the percentage of people who are in shape and wealthy is like 3% or lower. So by that definition, it cannot happen to 97% of their audience. Meaning they're giving very specific advice to a very small number of people, but the vast majority of people are listening and it isn't solving any of them. Andrew <laughs> Tate changed my life. Great man, this guy's just the god. Where, where people, is it? But the so I didn't do a combo, I didn't know I needed. He changed my life. If people are listening. I'm just a simple man. I work out, tell the truth, I'm straight up with everyone. My number one hard, fast rule. Blank, lazy, with them. I don't want to work. I avoid them like the plague. I, I don't know. Tate is pure god. Andrew Tate changed my life. And it isn't solving any of their massive problems. It's actually making it worse. Maybe if you are a multi-millionaire who's in good shape, you can treat women the way that they do. But the problem is, is that when the vast majority of their audience is hearing that advice and seeing how they live, and then they're treating women the same way, that's not helping them. That is hurting them. Yeah. And since the title of this video will be something about how incredibly successful and profitable the business of exploiting lonely men is, let's look at how successful it is. Okay. Fresh and Let's Fit go. is probably the biggest self-help guru red pill podcast and they're pulling in tens of millions of views per month on just Hey, is that weird drop right there? What happened? YouTube alone, which- Oh, you guys can see it. Wait, wait, wait. Here, there's that- There's that weird drop right there. Between January 23rd and May 23rd, right? Like the year. I wonder what happened. I really do. Used to be, before they got demonetized, easily oh. over $50,000 a month just in ads, without product placement, wow. without donations from their fans, without their courses that they sell, without their other platforms like Rumble. And you don't have to go far to see just how low effort. Am I the only one who thinks it's very cringe that they call themselves gurus? I, yeah, I agree. It is very cringe to call yourself a fucking guru, man. 
and low class this space can be. In terms of the people that can pull in millions of views, earning hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions a year, I mean just look at this dude, he's a VTuber of a low animated JPEG vampire who never shows his face, and his entire content is reacting to women on TikTok, telling his audience of bitter, angry and lonely men that all the women We have red pilled VTubers? What the fuck? What the fuck? Well, he's really just a PNG right there. Doesn't even seem to have a model, so is he really a VTuber? You know, that's the whole fucking spiel. How you say in English about if a PNG tuber is a VTuber and shit, like. What the fuck? He still doesn't know about the. Skeptic clones. Oh no, I don't. Why are we taking it to the Orochimaru? <laughs> Why does this, this kind of look like Orochimaru? <laughs> oh, my feet never watched the video. Woman says she's ready to settle down now that she's had her fun. Realizes men aren't interested. Okay. In on the videos are used up Tale of the Fiend 304s who no one will ever love and how it's all their own fault. It's basically not giving anybody advice, just a space to come where they can point a Dating is so hard. Women hit 30 plus and realize finding a man isn't easy. Women anymore. and say, haha, that's your fault. You didn't love me, so it's good that you're upset and bad things are I don't I don't know what the guy is saying. We we might look into this guy afterwards, right? Like, let me just open a tab with it. Taylor the Fiend. Like, we can look into this guy afterwards. Uh, the Fiend. But... I'm, like, thinking, like... No, no, I'm I'm still forming a sentence. We'll we'll just round it back a little bit and hear to what he has to say again. His face and his entire content is reacting to women on TikTok, telling his audience of bitter, angry, and lonely men that all the women on the videos are used up 304s, who no one will ever love, and how it's all their own fault. It's basically not giving anybody advice, just a space to come where they can point at women and say, haha, that's your fault, you didn't love me. So it's good that you're upset and bad things are happening in your life. It's plain and simple, people just feeling content to live in hate. In the real world, the solution to men's problems don't need all of this. And it definitely doesn't need all the conspiracy theories, anti-Semitism, racism and other nonsense that gets platformed at the same time by all these podcasts and Manosphere grifters. Obviously, I've acknowledged the problem is real, that there is a growing number of men who are really struggling with how to live their life, but there are things that they can do. And I am also sure that these platforms or these people do sometimes give good advice, and people have made positive steps in their life due to that advice, and would claim that they've been helped by Andrew Tate and the Red Pill and things like that. I'm not saying that that's not possible. But there's a limit to the advice that they're giving where it goes overboard into very, very unhelpful things. Mm -hmm. Of course, you should definitely go to the gym. You should eat right. You should sleep yeah. at a regular time for yes. eight hours if you can. Most importantly, you should find hobbies that put you in the real world with your peers. Work at socializing. Find people who like the things that you do. And of course, treat people like they're individuals who deserve to start out with a blank slate of who they are yeah. and not with a list of preconceived and negative attributes that some guy on the internet told you were true while profiting from doing so. For every negative anecdote that you hear, you can also just find a positive one too. So this is actually a huge problem in society now, and mm. if you were paying attention, you saw this coming a long time ago. Even before Andrew Tate right. showed up and accelerated the movement forward and into the mainstream, there were communities the just red full pill. of hating women, like the Red Pill subreddit, the incel forums. Uh -huh. These things existed and were growing exponentially in popularity. So where does all this end? 
well, who knows? The issue is that this problem is yet again turn into another internet war where it's us versus them and people are drawing lines in the sand, not understanding that this mindset has gotten us nowhere close to solving societal issues and just reinforcing the positions of each other, <laughs> making it just easier for the people exploiting the male oh loneliness God. epidemic for their own gain, while making everything orders of magnitude worse for the people involved, who are essentially just the victims. So that's the insanely profitable business of exploiting the male loneliness epidemic. Thanks for watching. Well, defeating that, reality. That was a really good video. Really, really good video.